Welcome. In this module, I'll look at graphing and reporting in Platform RTM. Platform RTM extends Cacti, an open source graphing and reporting tool. It includes plugins and a large library of graphs purpose built for Platform LSF environments. I've selected the Graphs tab. The panel down the left allows us to navigate through the various graphs of time series data in a tree view. We're currently looking at queue level statistics for the release queue on the build cluster. The first graph is showing the number of jobs in various states, and the second is showing queue dispatch times in minutes over the last 24 hours. I'll come back to this graph in a minute. I'll select another view of the available graphs. In this view, I can filter graphs based on various available templates. Graphs are divided into categories that show data about various things of interest to cluster administrators. For example, graphs related to FlexLM show license server and license software feature usage. The grid-related graph templates show information about platform LSF operations. Graphs are available for virtually any platform LSF reported statistic. Examples are jobs, queues, hosts, license projects, application profiles, and so on. I'll look at a simple graph that shows the operating efficiency of our cluster. Efficiency is defined as CPU use divided by the CPU capacity available normalized for the relative performance of each host. Performance is normalized based on the LSF CPU factor. This view results in three different graphs, one for each cluster the platform RTM is monitoring. We can monitor efficiency over any time period. I'm looking here at the last day using a preset in the filter selection. I can see that the MC cluster is idle, but that the platform central cluster is almost fully busy. Our larger build cluster is relatively idle overnight, but seems to get busy early in the morning. I'll look at the same data over the last month. By looking at graphs over different time horizons, I can start to spot daily, weekly, or even annual trends in usage. Understanding how usage patterns change can help me plan capacity more effectively. Let's look at another view. I'll show available memory across all different host groups in our monitored environment. These graphs are showing us memory usage by LSF host group relative to available physical and virtual memory. Normally we'd expect total available memory to be pretty constant. These apparently odd patterns indicate that the cluster host was taken up and down and that the memory associated with VM-based cluster nodes was resized several times over the last month. One key series of measures is related to pending jobs because users tend to get upset when jobs take a long time to run. Let's look at just one more example before we move on. I'll look at I.O. activity for all nodes in the cluster. This view generates 105 separate graphs, one for each host over the last month. I know I had a brief issue where a machine froze for a time, so I'll search for that machine and see if I can determine what happened. Sure enough, I see a big spike in paging activity represented in green, suggesting that this machine ran out of memory at one point. Clicking on any of these host graphs shows us the same data but over different time horizons. Now I see system I.O. and paging activity for the last day, week, month, and year. I'm back where I started now looking at the queue statistics for the release queue. The data suggests an interesting pattern where for a day or two the cluster seemed to be very busy with long-running jobs. I assume they're long-running because no job ended during this period. I'll look at the release queue just over the last day. I'm particularly concerned about service levels on this queue because delays here can affect my release schedule. I'll scroll down to see a graph that shows pending times for the release queue. And sure enough, there were a few time periods where pending times were getting very long, approaching two hours on Wednesday evening. This is the sort of pattern I'd expect to see if a long-running parallel job was possibly consuming all the slots on the cluster and suddenly released them allowing pending jobs to run. I'll click on the pending times graph to expand it. As before, I see activity over the last day, week, month, and year. I'll focus just on the weekly view by zooming in using the magnifying glass. I can further zoom in on a region of interest using the mouse to drag across the graph. Now I'm looking at the particular time period where the jobs were pending. The polder only checks the pending job count every five minutes, which is why the results appear staggered at this resolution. I'll narrow this down even a little further to the time period of interest.
Now that we've defined the time range, let's look at the active jobs during this time. I can see details about all 213 jobs that were on the cluster during this period. Right now the jobs are sorted by ending time in decreasing order. To see what jobs were most affected by delays, I'll sort decreasing by the job pending time instead. Now I see clearly the jobs that were most affected. With a little more analysis, I could determine the pending reason for these jobs and determine whether the bottleneck might have been avoided with a different scheduling policy or different resource requirements. So far, I've been looking at some of the standard graphs related to Platform LSF and Platform RTM. We've looked at a few, but there are literally hundreds of different graphs. Administrators who are interested in doing so can even define their own graphs under the Console tab. Graphs can also be customized by selecting Graph Management. The number of graphs built by RTM will depend on the configuration and size of the cluster. In this environment, we have 843 graphs, but despite the apparently large number, the interface we've just seen makes all this information easy to navigate. From this view, I can easily modify any of these graphs or create my own graphs. Let's summarize the way that these graphs are useful to administrators. With better visibility to resources and exactly how they're being used, administrators can improve the efficiency of their environment and get more work done with potentially less resources. Insight into exactly where and when bottlenecks are occurring and how resource use is trending aids in more effective capacity planning. By being able to drill from graphs directly into individual jobs, problem identification is greatly simplified. By monitoring efficiencies and removing bottlenecks, we can measure and continually improve the service levels to our users. And finally, with better service levels, we improve not only user satisfaction, but overall productivity as well. And this concludes our quick overview of platform RTM graphing and reporting. Thank you for your attention.